hello everyone thanks for tuning in to the lockdown podcast with me sunny and our guest today is sam tidman also from the band um yeah so let's get down hey sam how you doing i'm good mate how are you yeah not too bad not too bad got a obscenely large um cup of beer oh i'm on the uh i'm on the double session nice 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 um so yeah how how you dealing with the lockdown let's get straight into it then yeah man i think i'm avoiding going mental you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh and to be honest with you i've been doing more um more exercise now yes, yes. than ever i don't exercise i never did well, i do now um so that's that's been good i've just been using it i don't know you know me i've always moaned that i wanted free time yeah and I've you've got it now so i'm now i've got it in abundance so in abundance if, indeed if i did moan it's not you know it's not doing my past self any justice is it let's be honest yeah man um so like obviously we hang out you know for people that are listening on youtube or watching now on instagram me and Tim are actually friends outside of the band <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so we've been hanging out quite a bit on Xbox and playing Animal Crossing on the Nintendo Switch and just doing loads of different things. Um, so we've been connecting that way and it's been like really, really fun. But obviously it's quite difficult to also just like be locked in all of the time um, without getting too much into it. Me and Tidman both, I think, live with high risk people as well. Mm-hmm. So we're just trying to do our bit to stay in, stay positive and just have a bit of fun. So you've been listening to any music? lately anything hate music yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah some yeah i've been listening to uh, a lot of random stuff lately actually I okay mean, um you know uh using this time to play more guitars then mm-hmm. you know obviously you listen to bands for inspiration don't you so yeah, yeah. i actually i've got a couple of the records i've been listening to mm-hmm. uh if you want me to divulge this information yeah yeah man go for it recommend recommend away Right, I mean, so you know, you know me. My music taste very much stems back to the hardcore punk days. Yes, right yeah, we shared it. Yeah, no. um, scumbag punk. You know, you know that's my. <laughs> All the good punk bands have at least one member in them with criminal records, which is why we are probably not actually under my own ratings a good punk no. band. No, I should change. I'll change that. that. You are a scumbag and a punk. <laughs> yeah, well, so uh, the first one, Youth Brigade. You ever heard of them? No, I haven't. Damn, that's a cool album cover. That yeah, is cool as fuck. Pretty cool. It's called Sound and Fury. So, this was a band. Um, I don't know if they're still going. I think they might be. You know, but um, they've that album came out in 1983, um, and it's got a couple of. They're from California. They have got a couple of songs on it. Um, I heard of them first through Jackass. <laughs> okay, all right. It sounds stupid, but like a lot of songs from when I was like, you know, we all started watching Jackass probably. I'm a little bit older than you, so maybe I started watching it what when I was about twelve. So, mm. uh, and on the t- you know the actual TV show, and they had some of their songs on there. So I'll tell you where you might actually have heard them. You would have heard them. You've seen great. You play GTA Five, right? Yeah, yeah. You know that song uh, on Radio X. Is it Radio X or you know the one I mean? Uh, yeah, called, I think it is uh, Radio X. Yeah, the uh, Blown Away. You know when we get blown away. Oh, okay, right. That's yeah. off that album. Yeah, that's Youth Brigade. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, see, like, growing up, like, we, I, I have three older brothers, as you know, um, but yeah, growing up, I had, like, three older brothers, and GTA or Jackass, any of these things that, like, young kids really shouldn't be, like, getting involved in, we was heavily exposed to, like. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, a lot of cool music come through um, <clears throat> Jackass, and I think the Jackass boys are quite community-based, especially with the bands, right? Especially the yeah, newer I- bands. I would say so. I mean, you know, think about uh, uh, Aiden said, yeah, I know that song. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone, by the way. Um, yeah, I think I think I think so. Definitely. I mean, you know, there's a lot of bands I found out through them. I mean, a lot of it is just their favorite, you know, their favorite bands are on there. But like bands like Smut Peddlers, another punk band, they're definitely a scumbag punk band, but they're, 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 they were cool. You've got... Um, Obviously, like CKY, you know, and obviously oh, naturally yes. that's Bam's brother. So, you know, yeah, what yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, 
but you know, loads of bands like that. So, I mean, I think there was a story. I, I don't know if this is true or not, but Miss Sugar, I'm pretty sure that they didn't have enough money to record one of their albums, and Ryan Dunn was just like a mad fan, and he paid for them. Yeah, to record it. Right. Is yeah, that, I think I think that is true. That? I f- I think that is true. I think um, Haley uh, said this once. Yes, I'm pretty sure that is true. Yeah. So like you know. Someone let us know. Someone do some research and let us know in Instagram comments if that is true. Yeah, Billiam. Billiam, get on it. That That's your job. Um, so, yeah, yeah on, you sorry. know, but it's a little bit like, um, I, I think there's a lot of things from that from that era, though. You know, you think about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Oh, man. Which was the one I started playing first. And, mm-hmm. uh, man, like, you know, but even bands like Rage against the machine yeah yeah, like, yeah. Uh, gorilla radio on it i'd never heard them before i mean i had two older cousins and that's where i got a lot of my it's weird because growing up i had like my proper punk in, uh, original punk wave influence like 70s punk sp- particularly british from mm. my dad so like you know so basically my dad was always playing bands like clash was always playing bands like you know the pistols not so much i mean you know because well i guess they ain't got many songs but even billy idol's first band like gen x you ever listen to them nope they're Good fucking have. great, man. Gen X are like, uh, you listen, you can tell it's Billy Idol without all of the, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing at the end of every word. And he sounds really babyface, but that's some really cool stuff. And uh, and a jam, another yeah. band, you know, saw so those records. Um, but then I guess, like, you know, once, once you, <laughs> you can only live in, like, you can only think you're definitely supposed to be from the 70s for a limited amount of time before you start going... Oh man, you know, maybe I'll just listen to that new record that come out because, you know, when you go and bang on to your mates, oh yeah, if you heard this song, this song's fucking right. amazing. They're like, so, yeah, that's been out for about 30 years, mate. Right, we have that a lot, right? We, <laughs> we, we, me and you have that in the band all of the time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to dig on uh, Billy and Aiden, but it is safe to say that we oh. like more of the old school punk um, sound and they're very much of the new new punk sound and that's i think you can hear it 100 percent within our music how we do it how we create it our live sound everything from it um there's massive pros to to the energy that biddy and aiden bring through that culture and i think there's massive pros that we bring through that culture but at the same time it is like it does get to a point where you do feel like you're rambling on and it is dated of course right? you do yeah yeah so, man. you start sitting there and feeling like fucking hell i've turned into my dad <laughs> yeah right I didn't even experience it <laughs> like, you know my dad yeah, was yeah. about the clash but at least he saw him wearing a bin bag whereas i just listened to it i got into the clash <laughs> just to one month. Records, yeah. dude i got into the clash one month before joe strummer died and then like you know I, I really got into it and then i mean i was too young to go to a gig if they did it, if they had a reform then anyway but like mm-hmm. you know then a month later you're like oh the lead singer of my new favorite band just died and you're like oh that's that sucks. That, that sucks right. on so many levels. Again, same. I can uh, I can relate to that as well. Like my dad loves the Clash. Grew up. I grew up on reggae and ska, punk. Yeah. Um, again, like kind of. But at the same time, I was more into grime and R and B and hip hop and garage. Again, through my brothers. Yeah. But and then as soon as I started to listen to more punk and Rage Against Machine and also more indie rock, yeah. I I I got really close with my dad and was like okay show me all of these bands again like then i was massively into like the police mm. the clash ub40 yeah rage against machine being a relatively modern band but actually if you look at about how far they go like it, you know it wasn't necessarily modern fun, as a time I was fact, thing. actually i really got into the police from spending an entire summer pretty much moved into your house unofficially <laughs> with your Everyone older brother moved into my house and, uh, yeah and uh i really got into the police Around your house, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of bands I've got into around your house. But, uh, and that's the thing, like, I think music culture, like, ethnicity culture as well, like, if you're if you're mixing with different ethnicities, people in different ethnicities are going to automatically bring different music. Well, and, that's, that's, that's the main reason why um, <clears throat> bands like The Clash in the 70s were really, really popular, because right. it wasn't just the white kids, right. you know, they embraced, well, they grew, they grew up in, like, West London, you know, like Acton, uh, Brixton, mm-hmm, etc. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. growing up around various different, you know, ethnic communities and, uh, oh, naturally the music, you know, big and like dub and reggae. And then they Huge. managed to, you know, I don't know, managed to actually kind of converge two types of music together, which, you know, is, is easier said than done. I mean, you know, 
there's it's been done bad so many you know really badly so many times but then you know it also strikes uh, stri- i guess it struck at a time where you know things were pretty hard so the songs that they were singing about at the time i mean we all know what the punk movement is basically of course like working right. class kids right. moaning right. and trying to make something right. better but then it strikes a chord you know i i guess you know punk music was great but at the same thing it's very uh it's very much uh, a white culture in that sense. In in some aspects, oh, you could, I saw, see, how, yeah. you well, could I see, feel, you could, you know, what I mean, you could see how some yeah. people would feel slightly alienated from it or right. included. Whereas a good thing about the Clash, you know, borders and bridges a load of those gaps, and then turns it into something that's accessible for multiple, you know, um, communities. Mm-hmm. And that is like that's that is a really good point. And like just to add on to other artists back in the day that was killing it and still are like in in their own respects in their own right, is like a band like the specials, like yeah, you know, what them guys were singing about and how how popular and mainstream they got and still are to this day, right? Mm. And then like the different again, that like the stuff I was talking about, the stuff I was singing about, again, really, really taps into that um kind of the ethnic community kind of scene but in a mainstream white predominant scene. And then to build onto your second point, um, punk being quite necessarily, well, not all the time, and it is okay, developing, yeah. it is growing, but it, it is predominantly, it can be a predominantly white scene, right? So then being like in a band with you boys and fronting it, sometimes you know, like, I noticed the theme, We've you've noticed the theme, you've said it to me, you know, um, out and about. So I guess, I guess it is always developing. But if you really look about like, Back in the day, people were still getting involved, like still getting down and, and, and doing yeah. And that's not to say that it's not accessible, like you know, standard, you know, it's not standard, but you know, like the, the typical format of a punk band, like the typical sound, isn't accessible to everyone because, of course, it is because what they're singing about is something that's applicable to you know, it's universal. Everyone is like, you know, no one likes to be fucking skint and you know, uh, not being stood up for by politicians or you know just in general shit going on you know like a lot of songs are still about heartbreak and things like that you know mm-hmm. and, and, well, that. An, in, an interesting <coughs> uh, statistic when i was at university one of my old lecturers natalie bell um she's sick like she's done some crazy work um go check her out um she said that in times of hardship like statistically and historically uh, grime r&b and hip-hop music alongside punk and metal as soon as times are hard people tend to go and listen to more of that kind of music because it relates because it mm. initiates and ignites something within people um but yeah so i, I think, think it's an it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting stat to kind of pull yeah. to especially especially with what's going on these days yeah i think um you know, all you got to do is just listen to a lot of different types of music. Um, just listen to a lot of music, and you you, you can know uh, you pick influences from left, right, and center, and it does nothing but enrich it. It doesn't make it any weaker. Uh, you yeah, know, you've definitely. never I've never heard of a band who, in, well, that's the lie actually. I've never heard <laughs> some bands that <laughs> Abba. Yeah. No, right? I don't, I don't like Abba. Right? I, it does nothing for me, but the songwriting is incredible songwriting is incredible but here's a fun fact actually with Abba you say this right so uh you know uh Pretty Vacant the yes sex pistols. yeah well you know that intro riff the mm-hmm. well Glenn Matlock wrote that uh the bassist and mm-hmm. he is widely acknowledged to said yeah I got the influence from Super Trooper from uh from Abba wow. there's there's a riff that Abba do there's a part it's, of an Abba right. song I'm not dogging on inspiration. Inspiration comes from ever. We've taken inspiration from absolutely the most smallest things, the most biggest things, the most relevant, to the most Abba. irrelevant things. Right. Especially, Especially Abba. Abba. I mean, <laughs> you put on Abba in the car when you pick me up and I'm like, this is the best thing. You know, I'm going to write all my songs along to side it. Um, all right. So to get back on away from Abba. Uh, go on. Sorry. Yeah. No, I was just going to say I've got a couple of other records. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, if you've got anything else that you've been listening to, anything that you can recommend anyone or. Yeah. You ever listened to Fugazi? Uh, yes, you you've put me onto them many many years ago, when we recorded our first EP slash album that got removed. Uh, someone said we sound like Fugazi, and I was like, who? And then you no, put me onto. Wasn't, wasn't that? Um, yeah, yeah, it was Jake. Jake yeah, said. Yeah, Jake. Jake uh, said that he was going to. Um, he wanted the drums to sound Fugazi esque. Yes, and then you, yeah, you put them onto. And me I was just that. like, oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, thirteen songs, Fugazi. This is an incredible record. Um, those those are the guys there. There's. Uh, 
the band, as you can see. There's Ian McKay, who's in Minor Threat, obviously. Nice. Name uh, your name your favourite song on the album, if you can. Oh, and if you can't, name your top three. Uh, probably Waiting Room. Waiting Room's great. There's a there's a song that they do. It's not off that album. It's like caustic acoustic or something like that, or acoustic or it. It's got a weird title to it, and it's off one of their. Uh, it's off a different album. It's off a later album. That was in 1988. Mm-hmm. This is off one that came out like I think in the 90s. Uh, but May Louis put me onto that song, and it's mm-hmm. it's just it's just incredible. But they were a really creative band, and you're a big fan of Idols, and I think a lot of the uh, noise uh, elements that Idols put into songs. If you listen to Fugazi, especially some of their later stuff, like Repeater. I see. I hear a lot of Fugazi and Idols. Okay, okay. I mean, I've that's that is one band I've been listening to a lot lately. Is Idols. I've been listening to Joy Zach's Resistance again through my morning workouts, and it just you know what? Like, I stopped listening to them for a while because I I played them so much and killed it a bit. Yeah. Listen to the album uh, two three days straight now working out, and it's phenomenal. Like every bit every bit to the backing vocals to the accents in guitars to the drums like everything every aspect of the album they thought about it's a good point i mean like uh so as well another coincidence this that flanagan's just joined them well, was going to the gym at one, he will say, he will quite clearly point out i was going to the gym at one point not i didn't consistently do it yeah <laughs> we don't need to well, always I was go listening to um but I was listening to a lot of, uh, I was listening to that album then because that's when it just come out. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's an incredible album. So many good songs in it, you know. I think what's nice is that um, they're interesting sonically. You know, you can listen mm-hmm. to them and you get a lot of different. I mean, personally, as a guitarist, when I listen, I forget, I, I forget the guitarist's name. It's like uh, both their names. But, you know, when I listen to them, I, I get a well, lot Byron of. Byron and Lee. That's it, yeah. I get a lot of ideas. Um, not a lot of ideas but you get a lot of inspiration from them when you listen to that because it's not you know I don't know about you right you play guitar you do, sometimes apparently you, you write riffs <laughs> for the band nah, you write some sick riffs but Thank you. you know how many times when you pick up a guitar and you go to write riff and you go oh brilliant I'm now tempted to put it in drop D because all of my riffs just sound like a bastardization of smoke on the water but oh. well, or something that you're like, I wrote this about three weeks ago. The same shit. I'm just regurgitating. Yeah, you know, yeah. and listen to it. Or you write a riff and you're finally like, yeah, this is fucking incredible. This is it. This is mm-hmm, this is mm-hmm. the riff that's going to mm-hmm. make the song, that's going to make the band break. And then you go, oh, yeah, it's Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> In a different key. <laughs> I mean, like, the thing is with, uh, uh, like, the songwriting, my aspect, like, obviously I am, like, you say bastardization like i'm a bastardized guitar player like i I've, I've i've learned everything from previous guitarists oh you know bass player in the dub rats i learned everything from charlie like bass wise properly uh playing bass with yasmin kittle being friends with her and then play like learning tips and tricks from her and then yourself as well like mm. everything from me picking up the guitar by accident and then to this point now mm. i think when i go to sit down to write a riff I don't really know what I'm doing and I'm just putting all of the tips and tricks and things I've learned through all the people I've learned and also like maybe credit where credit's due stuff I put myself and time into mm. and I will come out with a riff and I'm like this is so mediocre in a sense of <laughs> it's not what I want like it is yeah. not it's it taking me ages to get there you and know then, you, hear, on, you hear it in your head right <laughs> and you go that's a great song i can hear it that riff is incredible listen to that tone and then you plug your guitar in and you go how oh, fuck am i going to get that tone and then you go ah oh, i can't do that solo that i played in my head because i can't sweep right oh. yeah, yeah you can't it's like when we tell billy you know do that drum feel that's yeah you're like oh, how hard can it be you just gotta hit him like, go and he just looks at you like, what the fuck he's like fuck off man like it's not easy <laughs> no yeah. i mean there's so many times or like a lot of the time i find i'll write lyrics and i'm pretty sure you're the same like you'll write lyrics and you'd think all right this is the music i want to go through like this is what i'm trying to achieve yeah. and you still in your head it's there it's there the music's there but but and it's a huge but you go to play the guitar and it's like why can't i make that riff why can't i make that music that goes with the lyrics that i wrote 
and I don't know, like for mm. me, I'll be, I'll, I'll sit up for hours, hours trying to figure it out. Well, like, I think that's that's one, that's the key to it, though. I mean, like, I've always been uh, guilty of being too fucking, um, too impatient, you know, and like, um, like I sent, I, you know, commonly I'll send riffs in the band chat, right? I'll, I'll get a riff and then I'll send it over to you guys and I'll be like, you know, mainly just to get a little bit of an opinion on it, but because you know but then i'll tend to like after getting a riff i'll be like okay that riff's done and then i'll write another one and mm-hmm. then i'll piecing the two riffs together then becomes a problem mm-hmm. but then you, mm-hmm. you get over that but then you get frustrated one thing that's really good about this lockdown is time is what we do have yeah. finally the grind has fucking stopped you know um and like that riff i sent the other day you know, oh, that was a good. That was, that was a really hey. good riff. That was a that was but, a nice riff. But thanks, man. But the thing is about that is it's like you know, I've just been practicing scales, just been practicing guitar, and then I get that riff just fucking about with that one scale or whatever, and then like I purposely like have set myself up with a task of I'm going to spend two weeks just on that riff and mm-hmm. things that go with it. Yeah, which I think I watched a documentaries of you know i've watched so many documentaries of like bands in the studio like you see the metallica one you see how the beat you look at the beatles in the studio like every serious musician they even watch the sound city one like tom oh, petty yeah, in the yeah. studio right and you see how stressed they get and they're working on one song and it'll take them like over a week to do one song and they might even have like you know two or three different ideas together but they go right i need to piece that that's that's the key in it right it's the spending time it's like the labor of it which mm-hmm. i think I think a lot of musicians, when they start, definitely me, you know, you kind of sit there and you think, right, well, I've practiced my scales. You know, I know how to do this. My technique's pretty good now. Like, I've been practicing that. I should be able to write a hit song. But realistically, like, unless you're someone freakishly, freakishly talented, it, it's not that easy, is it? You know, and you have to spend the time on it. And uh, it's a bit of a craft. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, as much as I agree with with the majority of what you said i think also there's an element of like you also have to have fun with that riff like you have to you have to have fun oh, with yeah. the stuff you're writing and like i will sometimes i'll spend weeks upon weeks learning techniques and stuff or or you know going back and forth with you what what can i do to get better and i'll spend so much time doing that and then i will spend the same amount of time not doing anything pick up the guitar and i'll write a song mm. Or I'll bring a song to the ba- band and then everyone, but all right, that's all right. That's good. We can make it better by doing this, that and the other. But at the same time, it's because I've had fun with it. And nine times out of 10, it's like when it's the bare bones of something mm-hmm. and then you bring it to the band or when we brought it to the band and everyone's just gone like, okay, cool. We can do our own thing. It's mm-hmm. when it's been, I think the most fun for everyone. I think that's mm-hmm. also another thing that I think people do overlook sometimes. Again, like I was listening to Wes's podcast. Um, mm-hmm and shout out Wes by the way I think yes. he's, he was he's, he was in here I think yeah. I mean. but and he was talking and good, saying it. again like saying about like perfectionism and yeah. just getting that balance right of like okay how much do you want to put into this that is mm. uh, that is gonna you're gonna be chopping and changing and perfecting or how much mm. does it become fun and I think it's that balance of having the two now for me again it is just easy to have uh, a fun balance a laid back blase kind of balance but um also having that structure is really important just want to give a shout out to robbie what's up yeah. robbie so i hope you're staying safe in yes Sealand, canadia canadia how is, <laughs> how is canadia robbie man yo wesley what's good man what's good? good wes it's good to see you man gonna try and get old wesley strong down on the podcast as well uh sometime soon yeah love uh, your so, pod man so keep an eye out for that um all right so before we crack on Oh, one more, one more. Any one more, more, any more. Yeah, yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me. No, they're not going to be awake right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> they literally live halfway across the fucking world. Okay, but oh, okay. The other, the other record I've been listening uh, to. Ah, yes. And so, yeah, yeah. my guys in Press Club. And uh, this album is fucking incredible. The second album is, I don't want to say even better, because I think they're both great. But uh, they they are due. I don't know what's happening with mm. the thing because obviously they were due to come over but obviously the uh you know the uh the pandemic and that, that's kind yeah, of put live music on, on a on a hold until probably september i'd say 
So, uh, can yeah, we get into that? Can we get into that with you? With your yeah, what, yeah. what you do for a living and and that kind of stuff as well, like how that yeah, is affecting like, you directly with Press Club as well. Like, is that something you call to get into? Uh, yeah, I can definitely get into a lot of my. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just there's some things I'm not sure if I can talk about, but most of it I can. Anyway, um, yeah. So like press club band from Australia. I do. I tour manage um, bands, and you know, with my mm-hmm. mate and, and Tom, mates Dom and Tom, and uh, we go take bands out on the road and that. Driving a big van and just fuck off throughout the country and Europe is the best nice. way to make a living. Yeah, you know, yeah. Fucking, you know, I don't want a proper job. I don't want a boss. Like no. you know. And you go out and watch a, a punk show every night, especially when you're out of like press club. But like they're, you know, they're a band. They're really cool. But I'd definitely check them out. They're kind of like a pop, like, like a post-punk or uh, post-hardcore sort of sound. Um, you know, with some pop instincts to it. But um, I think they're incredible. Their songwriting's great. I mean, like, favorite you know, songs on the album? Oh, fuck. I said favorite songs. You can have more than one. It's difficult because. So every time I go out with a band, and if I've never listened to them before, if I didn't know them before, I won't listen to them before I take out out on the road, because because the best thing is like you, you you're with them, you meet them, and then you drive somewhere. So like literally, actually, this time last year, yesterday, a year yesterday, we did a BBC session with Press Club. That was the first day we went did like a Radio One thing for Dan Carter, like a live session. That was awesome, and then. Uh, the second day we went played Cheltenham and I'd never seen them really play music, never heard, never really listened to them because I chose not to, you know, for that reason. So then like they started playing and they, you know, they kind of blow you away. Every song on like each album now I've got like a personal memory to because mm-hmm. like, you know, like traveling throughout Europe with them and like, you know, I consider them like, you know, four real good friends now. Yeah. Um, personally i mean off this album i'd probably say uh i don't know it's i don't know i'd probably say stay low i love that tune good good um that was a great song and then uh i don't know man fucking hell suburbia is like uh <laughs> suburbia is great because it's a proper anthem and uh we did grows rock in belgium and nice. uh, which is like a punk fest and yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. We don't know what that is. It's really good, like you know, no effects and people like that have headlined it. Anyway, we did that and we played in this tent, and it, it was like the rowdiest fucking show uh, for a long time I've been to and seen. Like we had like about thirty stage divers, you know, people getting on stage and then diving into the crowd. It was fucking awesome. That's wicked. That's so cool. About everywhere. You had like, I didn't know what the policy was from like the. Uh, from the stage manager or the festival so i'm kind of freaking out a little bit because i'm standing there with the band's manager today and we're kind of like looking and we're like fuck are we supposed to be controlling this like are we supposed to like be the one to <laughs> this? are we just not doing our job here like are we showing incredible neglect <laughs> of our responsibility but then we were both also like it's a punk show and then uh the best thing happened like they passed the microphone to this guy this german guy in the crowd and uh there's a bit where they sing back and they get the crowd to sing back and uh, this guy basically just screamed it sounded like a an in tune burp man <laughs> and uh <laughs> it went all through the pa because it was right in the system and like they we'd recorded that on video as well so there was some funny shit come out of that so I, yeah it's a difficult question so i, I don't know what yeah. favorite I like I th- it's obviously you can obviously tell that you've got a lot of um emotions attached to it a lot of memories attached to that kind of well your time with them obviously you spend a lot of time with them when you're on tour so probably spent in in total probably coming close to people i've spent the most amount of time with other than you lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah, like yeah. you don't have a day away i've spent two entire months with Just not straight. like 10 yeah. minutes on your own yeah and i guess i guess that yeah so that's fair enough i guess i can understand why it makes it um you know difficult to kind of pick a favorite song it's, it's listen that's a hard question that's that's why i ask it i'm not i'm not I'm, if you ask me i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ask i'm gonna tell you to go fuck yourself um but yeah so all right so what have you missed the most like generally like not band wise generally what have you missed the oh, most wow. since <laughs> lockdown is there anything that you have done? Is there anything you haven't done? Like, what are you missing? Because there's definitely got to be a few. Yeah. Robbie said, "Headwreck" is a tune. 
Yeah, Robbie knows. I've Michael seen Robbie. Knows. Actually, to be fair, just just a quick one. Yeah. I really like that question. But Robbie, uh, so whenever we're in Glasgow on tour, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. straight away, I, I'm on the phone with Robbie about like a month before, and I'm like, right, we're going to be there this date. You fucking make sure you're free, right? And he's just like, oh, don't worry, son, I'll be there. <laughs> and <laughs> Robbie is down to party all of the time. Yeah, and uh, Robbie, pretty much. Did you? I can't. You're gonna have to comment in the in the uh, chat. Uh, did you break your ankle, or did you just fuck your tendons? Why didn't you tell us this? We did tell you this. I'm sure. I'm, I don't think I did. The first time I'm hearing about it. Basically, like we did that, and then I dropped the van back to the hotel after he'd done this. He did this just before the gig, or just after. <laughs> we loaded out. Drove the van back to the hotel and then went, right, fuck it. Right, I'm getting the van back to the hotel as, poss- as soon as possible. It's seven o'clock now. We're going to be back in town for eight and then we're going on a fucking session. We're going to have a sick time, right? And uh, we did that and then woke up the next morning and Robbie Toys. up. Toys ligaments. There so you Robbie, go. Robbie, Robbie said tore his ligaments for anyone who was watching on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to him, I was just like, we woke up the next morning, right? It was me and, and Ian, we shared a room, right? And like, I don't know if you've ever stayed at an Ibis budget, but you have a double bed <laughs> and you have like a bunk single bed above it. Yep. And you have like, I, I know you're on about. <laughs> right? And fucking me and Robbie were in the bottom bed, right? And I uh, woke up in the morning and just went, I feel like a fucking alien. I had the worst hangover because we were drinking like a uh, Buckfast White Russians in wow. uh, like, Sleazies, I think. Wow. Yeah. And, and, uh, then <laughs> fucking, uh, Robbie's just like, I can't even walk. <laughs> Anyway, just walk. I know you definitely did not tell me this like at all I do not remember you telling me this story at all yeah go on <laughs> yeah literally I was just like how are you feeling expected him to be like yeah I'm rough and he was just like I can't walk <laughs> what do you do with him you pick him up you drag him you just left him there what happened I, I don't really remember to be totally honest with you because we were really hung over so like you know when you're still kind of pissed yeah yeah, yeah. And I was thinking that day that I definitely had to drive to like Manchester or London or somewhere. Oh, not like Manchester or Newcastle. Bad. So I was sitting there just thinking, oh, how can I be safe? Mm. <laughs> Did I fuck it? Uh, and Robbie's just kind of sitting there going, oh, can he walk? He called his mum and I think his mum had a right go at him on the phone. And then he ended well, up. He got a taxi to the <laughs> hospital. Robbie he has come in. The- he got a taxi to the hospital. Man, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Robbie, that you got left on a night out with Tidman. <laughs> Hey, listen, you know, don't act like I'm the only bad influence here, man. Robbie is just as equally as I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I guess probably Robbie is an innocent party in any of this. <laughs> um, so, nice thing, man. right, so go back, go back to the initial question. What yeah, do you miss the most? Do you miss that the most? I miss that a lot, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I guess just sort of like, I mean, personally, to be totally honest with you, I think I've been dealing with it was a great night i think i've been dealing with this quite well you yeah. know because i'm quite happy to sit at home and mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of things that i never have time to do when i'm like working and yeah, it's a bit yeah. like, you know and i'm never at home when i'm yeah, working, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's nice to actually have a prolonged amount of time at home i definitely miss going to the pub obviously okay. yeah that's pub. probably number one going out for dinner and stuff like that that's quite mm. nice Mm-hmm. it is nice to hang out with people in person yeah i i I mean i tend to avoid it as much as possible uh these oh. days but i think that is that is something hard like that i'm missing is hanging out with my mates and stuff but mainly mainly it's like um it's like rehearsals and shows uh, yeah yeah it's yes. the killer yeah it's um, i mean that that is that's tough. Like the gigs and and like yeah, that that shit's tough. Like having all that fucking like, you know, come back from that tour, that first tour of press club, mm. and was like right, I'm buying an amp. <laughs> oh we yeah, Highgate and bought that JCM 900, which is up with you know the loudest amp I've ever fucking owned. Like you can just... actually watch that. You can watch that episode on a day in the dirt on a YouTube channel <laughs> of Tidman buying his amp. But that was a sick. It's a sick amp. Yeah. Well, it, you could. It's it's fucking loud enough. I mean, you could probably play a stadium with that. Not that we will, but you could. What? Well, who knows? But we we yeah. might. We might. Not anytime soon, but we might. Hmm. And the thing is, like, um, that sitting somewhere. Meanwhile, at the minute, I've got an amp that. You remember my old orange? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you know, sixty watt is solid state, so it's not as loud as a, you know, ah, uh, fucking. It was so quiet the other day. 
right? And when I say so quiet, I mean like, I know my hearing might have taken a bit of a pounding in the last 10 years, right? But I'm not deaf, right? Fuck me, man. As soon as I started playing it, my phone starts going off. Can you turn that down, please? And I'm like, I can barely fucking hear it, man. I just want to go into a rehearsal room and just go, just turn it off. You know what? I I I was gonna save this for last, but I think we might as well just crack on with it. The band stuff, like we obviously all went for our personal journeys. We stopped gigging, we stopped doing stuff as a band, and then we we mm. we we come out the other end of our personal journeys in a better place. Mm. And we we really cracked on with stuff. We really really cracked on with stuff. And I was feeling amazing. I know we was all feeling buzzing. And then this fucking uh, pandemic come in and. Obviously, this is a very much first world problem that we're about, we're complaining about, but it really took. It's like it, it's, it's 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 ruined so much. Like I I miss the band. I miss rehearsing. I miss gigging. I miss having that one space. I know I'm going to get once a week with my friends to be able to make absolute noise, but also exercise certain freedoms that we have. Mm. And it's like the complete juxtaposition of like being locked in, can't rehearse, can't gig, can't do anything. Well, you know, like uh, lockdown would be sweet if like, let's say there was like fucking, if there were four beds, internet and a shower and a TV there. Oh, I'd well, just say, just fuck a, it. I'd probably say, fuck it. I'm doing lockdown at the studio. Well, let's pay and Jake. Not- to live there <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> man i'll just be like jake let's just fucking do shit like he could record everything or do whatever he wanted he could bastardize or he do whatever the fuck he wants yeah yeah, yeah. I, you know how good would that be wake up I in totally the morning agree. and you go what do you want to do tonight oh well i better go and get some beers from tesco and we probably should eat something and but definitely have a riff that i'm working on so i'm yeah. gonna quit that but that's cool like that's 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 the stuff i miss like that is the just the, the catharsisism of like going into a room and just letting it all leave there do you know just like pouring it all out and letting it leave there yeah do you know what i've do you know what i've kind of noticed and i feel really lucky for over over lockdown is uh obviously family and everyone being everyone i care about and will know most majority not everyone but everyone being healthy that's obviously mm-hmm. number one uh but like you know having the guitar or having a computer where you can do like computer music and he's in Ableton, you can make electronic music, you can make whatever the fuck you want, you can record, right? You know how to do that. Mm -hmm. When I talk to people and they don't really have that, I I always forget, because I've played guitar since like what, I was 12? Since like year seven. Damn, Damn. yeah, yeah. And you've played like instruments for however fucking long, right? You're probably the same, yeah, right? You played bass originally, is that right? Yeah, I played bass, uh, I want to say like 14 15 i started playing bass yeah 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 right so so you see all this right so you you, you've played a an instrument for a long period of time right what i struggle with is that when people a lot of people i know that are going kind of like out of their brain and stuff you know being bored and not having anything to do and rightly so like fair enough you know Mm. like is it you know staying indoors is is it does impact your mental health but i've always struggled to to be bored when i'm at home yeah but you're like if you don't mind me saying, you you are more introverted than than like than I would say I am. Like your way is more introverted, and you're very good at keeping yourself company. Like yeah. I feel, I feel like that's that's. But there are so many people I know that are, are good at that, and that's a wicked skill, especially in these days to have. Like that is such a good thing to have. But also, I think again, like the the immediate demand of today's culture, like mm. of having to have everything now, having to do everything. You know, the fear of missing out, and all of that other crap. <laughs> You know, this, this is an important point because I think I think we're kind of lucky, you know, in the sense that I definitely grew up when everything wasn't like that. Straight away, know. yeah. Right when I grew up, I mean, like, technically, I mean, like, you know, I'll say that I grew up before the fucking internet, but I mean, I grew up, I didn't grow up really before the internet, but I grew up before it was available in everyone's home. I remember when dial up was a new thing. I remember my stepmom having this computer that had a black screen with green text on it. And mm-hmm. she only had a computer because she worked at the bank, right? And like fucking, I remember writing on it, I went to the park today and played on the swings, right? And that was fucking <sighs> space. Like shit, voice there. Little pre- yeah, I've always had a low voice. 
<laughs> also, shout out to Lawrence, man. Uh, he's one of the students who used to teach. He's he's a good kid. He makes Hello, some Lawrence. good music. He also skates. He's a good skater. Um, oh. But yeah, like um, fucking, you know, I don't know. I remember, right, this is a stupid anecdote, right, that, that, that kind of reinforces my point. I remember being a kid, right, we all were into wrestling, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You might not have been, but... I wasn't, I was more into, uh, I wasn't into wrestling at all. I was into like more He-Man, kind of Thundercats. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I, was, I, w- I wasn't into that WW stuff. Like it just. Nah. Well, well, I was, right. I was very fucking into it. Yeah. Like, everyone <laughs> in the street was, etc. right. Now I ordered a cane mask, right. Straight over my head. He was a wrestler who wore this mask. You could never see his face. He was a bit like, I guess he was the wrestling equivalent of Slipknot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You know, and uh, and no one knew what he looked like. Yeah. No one had a fucking Scooby. uh, Fucking hell. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I bought one of them masks, right? I I harangued my mum for like weeks. I was like, mum, we're playing wrestling in the streets. Like, you know. Jesse's got a fucking imitation belt. Like, I need a mask, man. Like, otherwise, <laughs> this is it. Like, I'm, I'm no one without this, man. Like, you're not the like, cool kid on the block anymore, right? And uh, so we ordered it, but it took like a month to come because we ordered it from America, and it was like the internet was was in its infancy, I guess, in that sense. And you ordered it, and fucking remember that kind. Of, and we're like, you know it's easy to my point with that is though is that i remember waiting for months and when it came it was good it was worth it because it gives you the time to work out if you actually fucking want it or not right whereas everything today uh, and i'm guilty of doing this too i just feel like it's such a now 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 yeah no one waits and takes in the actual sort of like surroundings like yeah right give me one second because that's that's quite a good segue give me one second i've got a book that i've been reading all right from the from the shelf that's nearly collapsing if you lot have never been to sonny's room he has this shelf that has books on it but it looks like it's fucking bowing it's like it's like it's like oh, i can't even it's, it's like that that's it's supposed to be flat but it's like that what's that i'm just saying your bookshelf is like oh. you know just bows <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i need to because the thing is if it falls it, it is destroying my my gaming set up as well like if that if that and it looks like it's gonna fall but right so uh my like my recommendation if you're if you're stuck in the lockdown and you're you're finding it tough and like we're talking about that instant gratification of of today's society social media and all the rest of it um nicholas carr the shallows is a fantastic book and um i haven't managed to finish it it is quite intense um but again it just it 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 talks about this stuff. It talks about how our brain's changing. It talks about how we're becoming uh, less able to do stuff. Our, cog- our cognitive development is changing and shifting. Um, mm. But it is that. It is that instant gratification. Uh, it's, it's And how bad it does affect people because you want things now all the but time. I thought about spending money. I listened to a book. I can't remember what book it was. I mean, I was listening to it on Audible. It was about, like, it was about fucking human behavior and shit like that, right? So, you know, and about how when you... Uh, when you pay by card, you know you get that instant gratification, that 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 pleasure run through your body because mm-hmm. you bought something and you've got yeah. it. But when you hand over money, you actually—I um, think it might have even been *Sapiens* or something like that. Right? Oh, that's a good or, one. Or, or uh, what's, you know, what's *Homo Deus*? Is that the second one? I haven't read the second one. Uh, the first one my brother gave to me or lent yeah. me. Yeah. It's well, I listened, I listened to him because, mm-hmm. like, I just could not read through that much. So I'd it's take good. things in better for audibly. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and, uh, yeah, and he were talking about how, so, you know, if you spend by money, if you spend with cash, you'll spend less because you, when you've got the physical wad in your hand, so you know how much you've got. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Go on a night out, right? Doesn't matter how pissed you get, you still want to spend as much as quickly. Yeah, right. But fucking, uh, it talks about how you know when you got cash, you you get physical like there's a there's a negative emotion you get like a pain that comes because through from you're, handing that you're money. Hand, you're handing money over, you're getting less back than what you. Yeah, do. yeah, yeah, yeah. I t- I Whereas, totally understand the psychology. So you pay that. by a card, right? You get the thrill or that yeah. rush, like a gambling addict gets when right. you put that on. And you're not if and you're, pain because you yeah. don't you don't you don't physically see that see that money right. go away right right okay so 
yeah these yeah these things are these things are dangerous and it's it's great to have an awareness of it but yeah nicholas carr nicholas carr the shallows get the book read it especially in lockdown give yourself a new perspective and mm. and when you're coming out of this lockdown hopefully you can walk away with some other stuff um i'm aware of the time so i'm just thinking about maybe kind of wrapping it up uh for now mm-hmm. um but just before we go um is there any advice you've got for anyone as someone who's good at staying inside and good at keeping yourself busy and good at looking after yourself? Is there any advice you have for anyone out there? All that last one. Well, but... right. In, 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 in this, in this time, whilst all these things are going on, this crisis, the pandemic we're in, is there any advice you've got for anyone who is struggling to stay yeah. inside? Oh, I, I got a few things, right? So Jake's just joined, right? And Jake's my mate who fucking is a machine. That guy runs for fucking fun. Literally, he is like a, disgusting. No, he, he is like a technically. I guess he is a professional athlete. I, I guess I would say, wow. right? He runs for days. Right? We went Brighton for the weekend. We got the work, the biggest session ever. Felt like absolute shit the next day, and I woke up and Jake just come back through the door like, <laughs> just run like seventeen miles. I was just like fuck that. Bro. Damn. Yeah. Damn. But exercise has done a lot for my mental well-being. It's made it a lot better. That's good. You know, so I know it's fucking long. It mm-hmm. is fucking long. Running is shit. I stand by that. If you love running, uh, to, <laughs> thanks for HA. It's a look, this Tash. I'm going very Mexican. That's another thing to do, actually. Grow your facial hair if you can. Try or shave, if you've got a lot of it, I can give you uh, advice yeah. on this. If you've got a lot of it, shave it. I accidentally shaved my whole beard off. I didn't mean to, but now it's growing back and I'm liking the results. He did, and he looked like he was 12, and it was oh, just... Oh, <laughs> such right. a baby face, man. I, I'm 25 years old, and I still look like a 12-year-old under this beard. Yeah, or, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, like, for example, if you've ever thought, I'll grow my beard, why not? <laughs> yeah, do it, man. Do it. Or, you Rachel, know, we, Rachel, we do not discriminate here. Yeah. Also, hello. That Eurovision winner. Do you remember that Eurovision winner, the girl with the beard? Yeah, but like th- that's. She listen, won you're, talk, you're, talk, you're talking to you're talking to 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 to, a, to an Arabic man here. Like that is <laughs> like you you people are 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 so so excited to see shit like that on TV. Mm. <laughs> like that's our culture, mm. man. Oh, that's we that. only used to seeing our nans with mustaches. Like nans have tashes. Didn't it's they? taken you. Yeah, it take it takes it take it takes that 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 long to grow a beard out here. Yeah. Yo, what's good, Richard? How's how's things? What's going on? Hey, Sonny, let me check my Greek. Yeah, oh yeah, straight up. Yes, you see, we don't discriminate out here. Listen, we got some Greek girls in here that roll out like that. It's calm. And then there's, but then there's, I don't know, but like you know, there's loads of things you can do. Like you know, like if if you want to, if you've got a guitar at home and you want to take up or a bass or something, you know, Fender uh, doing free guitar lessons. Oh, straight up, they are doing free guitar. Do they? You don't have to put any card details in. And, like, you know, I know so many people who have logged onto that and started getting better. Mm. Uh, my cousin yeah. said she's going to snitch on me to Nan. Listen, I do FaceTimes with Nan. I will tell her myself just so, you, you know, I put myself in that hole. Shout out to Tim's <laughs> Nan. <laughs> yeah, she's a legend. Uh, but, like, you know, play guitar learn a learn an instrument learn a hobby that you wanted to do like you know mm. obviously like if you're working and that then you know carry on working and do your thing yes uh, uh you know there's a lot of people working really hard out there right now to to keep everyone safe and you know i know rach is one of them so thank you very yeah. much for everything that you're doing we really appreciate it um yeah. but also like you know um just just do that thing that you've been wanting to do for ages if you can like i don't know like learn a language download duolingo there's so many things that we can do we got the internet and it's a powerful tool and nikki today i think nikki's in here and if nikki's doing it like she baking today she made mm. some unicorn biscuits that looked looked great i can't eat them because i can't go around there but they looked great you know, yeah, but, some bacon. Yeah, but you're right you're right you are right do the things that you've always wanted to do and i've never had time for i mean like in my house at the minute we're redecorating now mm. that's wicked like my parents have wanted to redecorate for ages they haven't had the time to they do have the time to now and it's yeah. definitely 100 percent keeping them busy um like i find myself now get tidying sorting things out spending more time with my friends spending more time with my family checking mm. up on people um but yeah so 
that's yeah that's solid advice man and i think if you guys are finding it difficult being indoors make sure you're reaching out to one another chat to each other even if it's for five ten minutes of the day um i know that some people are finding it difficult to to just kind of get through each day without kind of going nuts or feeling a certain way but just talk to each other message us get involved and we will talk back like we're we're not strangers and we won't you know we're not scary (laughs) people get involved ask us to ask us to make a song about a stupid topic and Tidman will do that for you. And I will Tidman, do that Tidman. for you. I will write a fucking stupid song. I mean, like, Sonny, Rachel, Nikki, everyone in this chat will confirm I chat the most fucking bollocks out of and, everyone. Yep, and we have we have been doing today. And I will, and I will continue to do that. That's my solemn pledge. I will never stop. But so. yes, <laughs> that, that, that is, I think that is a, a, good, a good place to end. Yeah. Um, thanks for everyone who's <clears throat> locked in live on Instagram. And yes, thank so. you for everyone who has listened on YouTube. Uh, join us, join us tomorrow at eight PM, where <laughs> I will have Billy from the band joining in on another lockdown podcast, and we'll be discussing many other topics. But for now, look after yourself, take care, stay safe, and thank you we are see you later. Bye. Peace. You are-